do rags, wave cream, brushes. Get the best products for your 360 waves at wavymerch.com. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Nick Wavy. I'm back with a new video. Now, this video was heavily requested by you guys, and it's something that I can actually give you advice on because I've been in this situation for about five years now, and that's what it's like living on your own and moving out for the first time. In the first part of the video, I'm gonna give you guys the basic rundown and my tips of the process you should take before you move out and when you move out. And then the end of the video, I'm gonna give you guys my journey and my experience on living on my own and how it's beneficial to you. Step number one, when you wanna move out, now you may not have this opportunity. You know, you may have no choice but to move out immediately and have no time to save money. But if you have the opportunity to prepare and plan for your moving out move, save your money. It's safe to have money saved up because if you move out, you sign a lease and now you're locked in for maybe a year contract. Let's say you lose your job two months later, but you still live on your own and you still have bills. If you have money saved up, that money will be able to help you when there's a rainy day and you don't have a job because you wanna be able to pay your bills and you don't wanna have to go move out or get evicted. So it's good to have a good set of money saved up before you move out. For me, I find it comfortable to save up a year's worth rent before you move out. That's step number one. Step number two is to get a real estate agent. Now you guys probably think a real estate agent is expensive, extra expense that you have to pay that you don't wanna pay. But where I'm from in Canada, I'm in Ontario, Toronto. If I wanna rent a place, I have my own real estate agent and the landlord has his own or her own real estate agent. So when we come to an agreement and I move in, the landlord has to pay his real estate agent and my real estate agent. So it's not something you come out of pocket for. And I believe they have to pay one month's rent to each person. Don't quote me on the number, but you do not have to go out of pocket when you're renting a property. It's good to have a real estate agent because they know the game, they know the questions that they need to ask and they can potentially fight a better deal for you. Sometimes it's better to have someone negotiate for you because you have to stay out the way. You don't wanna show emotion when you're doing negotiations because they can see if you're desperate, if you're really excited, and then they'll just raise the price, you know? So it's better to have someone negotiate for you and that is a real estate agent. Step number three is to find a location. So depending on your situation, where you work, do you have a car or not? You wanna try and find a location that best fits your life. So if you work, downtown you don't want to necessarily live you know 30 minutes away you want to kind of situate yourself close to work so your travel expense will be a lot lower so when i first moved out i didn't have a car for about a year and a half living on my own i lived close to a mall and grocery stores were all walking distance so there was no necessity for me to have a car. And if I ever wanted to go anywhere, I could just give my friends $10 and be like, yo, can you drive me here? So location is very important. You wanna situate yourself close by to things that will benefit you on your journey. So bus stations, grocery stores, uh, the gym, maybe, you know, you have to figure out what you want and try and position yourself close to there. Step number four is probably the most important thing and that's figure out your budget. You wanna figure out how much money you wanna spend on rent, but it's not just rent. You have rent, you have house insurance, you have electricity, water, you might have gas, you have internet, you have phone bill, and I think those are the eight that can come to my mind right away. So when you're figuring out your budget, I like to put worst case scenario. So if I have my budget for rent, I'll say, yo, my max is two grand a month. So I'll look for places that are less than two grand. But if I see something that's worth two grand, I'm like, yo, that's my limit and I won't go more than that. My electricity bill roughly is about $30 a month. My water bill is about $30 a month. I don't think I pay a gas, I don't pay a gas bill actually. My internet is $45 a month and my phone is $50 a month. My house insurance, I believe is $200 a month. And home insurance is if you know there's a flood or if someone robs your place but the thing is with that is you have to have pictures of your place so you can prove let's say something gets stolen you have to have a picture showing the insurance like yeah I actually had the TV right here and it was stolen so I need that to be um, I need to be paid for that those are roughly the ideas and the numbers that I pay when it comes to budgeting for living on my own it's not too bad and food food is definitely the most important thing 
Now buying groceries is not that expensive. You know, I spend probably on actual groceries, probably no more than $200 a month and I live by myself. But where it gets expensive is when I eat out. So not only am I buying groceries, like the $200 a month, I'm also spending $5 every day, $10 every day, and that adds up on top of the groceries. So if you're living on your own or you wanna move it on your own, make sure you budget for eating out as well. So don't just say, yo, 200 for groceries and that's it, because you're most likely not gonna budget for the food, and that is gonna be probably the most expensive expense out of everything on living on your own. Step number five is paying your bills. Now, before I moved out, I had no idea how to pay bills. I'm like, how do you pay electricity? How do you pay internet and water? I have no clue, but it's actually really easy. Before you move into a place, you know, your landlord will give you the company that is selling you the electricity, that's selling you the water. And then you call them or you go on their website and you set up your account and you can usually most of the time pay by credit card or debit card. When I was a kid, I had no idea. I'm like, how do you even pay bills? They didn't teach me that in school. So when I moved out, I just said, I'll figure it out. But yeah, a lot of the times there's a credit card option and a debit card option. So you don't necessarily have to be worried about that. Pay your bills on time because you don't want anything getting cut off. Then you have no electricity, no internet, no water. And then you're trying to shower. There's no water. Trying to go text your mom or go on the internet and say, yo, my shower is down. You have no internet because your internet just got cut. So pay your bills on time. Maybe set a reminder in your phone saying every Monday of the, fir uh, the first Monday in every month, I have to pay my electricity. You know, so set a reminder on your phone and do not forget. And number six is probably the most important step when it comes to moving out on your own. And that is being responsible. When you've been living with your parents for however long, you've been living under their rules for your entire life. You know, you can't go out at a certain time. You can't have your friend come over. You can't do anything that they don't want you to do. When you move out, you have the freedom to do anything. No one's gonna tell you anything. No one is gonna stop you. So you have a lot of power. And when you have that power, you have to have a lot of responsibility because you could ruin yourself and you could put yourself in a really bad situation. So please understand that when you move out, you're on your own. No one is gonna tell you to do anything. So with great power comes great responsibility. So yeah, you can turn up every day. You know, you can have people at your house, party every day, you can throw a party, smoke all day, drink all day. No one's gonna tell you anything, but you do have life because once you move out, you're pretty much an adult at that point. You know, you're gonna have bills. You gotta work to pay these bills. You can't just be turning up every day, going out every day, and you gotta work because these bills are not gonna stop. So you're gonna be free when you move out, completely free. And with that power, you must be responsible. You have to look at things from a different perspective. You're not a kid no more. You're literally a grown man or a grown woman. So be responsible is definitely the most important tip that I can give you guys when you move out on your own. So my story of living at home and then moving out. I moved to Barbados in I think 2013 and I saved a lot of money there. There was a point where I was working. I didn't really have a life, you know, so I saved up a lot of my money. The bad thing about living in Barbados is that I had no friends. Like I said, I had no social life. So that really took a toll on me. So it was February 2016 when I told myself I want to move out on my own. I think at the time I may have been 21. I told myself I want to move back to Toronto. All my friends are there. I think it's time. I have a decent amount of money saved up. I feel like I'm ready to make that next step. I had my real estate agent in Toronto go look at a few places and he sent me a spot that was close to a mall, really close walking distance to a mall because I didn't plan on buying a car and I didn't budget for a car. So my plan was to just walk to the grocery store, carry like 10 bags and that's that. So a car expense for a year and a half, I didn't have a car. So my bills were really minimal it wasn't really crazy it wasn't really a headache before i moved i had a lot of money saved up because i was a youtuber at the time full time so i don't know if things are going to do good i don't know if things are going to do bad i made sure that i had rent saved up so i could literally do nothing let's say i just failed on youtube i could still pay my bills and having that comfort made it easier and less stressful for me to grind and be happy because I just didn't have to worry. So when I first moved out, it was it was crazy. Like my mom helped me move in and then she left back to Barbados and I was there by myself. So I was just sitting there for a bit and I'm just like, what do I do now? You know, I could just do anything. I can't remember what I did, but I just had my PS4 there. I had my TV there, I had my bed, my couch. When I first moved out, <laughs> <laughs> you have power, you know, like you got a crib. So I'm living in a condo, I'm 22 or 21 or something. I 
started to live not like i didn't go crazy not at all i was still very responsible because i was nervous i was scared that i would mess up you know so i had to make sure i had my head on my shoulders but at the time this this was all new to me you know what i mean it was all new to me and it was a good experience cooking i didn't really know how to cook or i didn't know how to cook and i was wasn't really worried i just said Yo, i'm hungry so when I'm hungry, I'm gonna have to learn. You know, it was a little, I don't even think I was, it was really nerve wracking at first when I first realized I had to cook. You know, it's pretty simple. A lot of it is just preparing food. Laundry, my mom showed me how to use a laundry machine one time. I got it, that's it. I always knew how to clean. But a lot of these things, for me at least, I learned while doing, while being in the situation. So you may be nervous, like, oh, I can't cook, I can't move out yet. Or, I don't know how to use a laundry machine, I, I can't move out yet. Move out and you'll learn it's not hard to cook it's not hard to do a laundry machine you'll figure it out and i think after a few months of being i guess a bachelor you know so a new bachelor in the city and you know i wanted a girl at the time i was like yo i'm done with the i wasn't living like a fast life or anything but i just wanted something more real i guess you could say and then that's just how you grow as a man you know everything is just stages and you'll go through the same thing that I went through, maybe different, maybe even better, who knows. But long story short, I've been living on my own for five years now. After my lease here is done, I'm gonna be buying my first house, and I think it's time, I've been renting for five years. I gave my landlord my last uh, 12 checks, and I was just like, okay, there's no way I'm renting ever again. God willing, you know, hopefully next year I'll buy property, and then I'm gonna make a next step. Like if I have a house, I gotta put a family in there. So life is all about stages and you just gotta keep taking steps forward and becoming a better person than you were yesterday. So just to recap, step one, you wanna save money just in case things go wrong. You still have money to pay your bills and have time to get yourself back on your feet. Step two is to get a real estate agent. Remember, you don't have to pay. The landlord has to pay their real estate agent and your real estate agent. Step three, find a location. If you know you're not gonna have a car, Put yourself close to somewhere you can get groceries and be around your necessities because having a car is also another expense that you may not be prepared to pay for. So location is key. Step number four is figure out your budget. Figure out how much money you wanna spend on rent, insurance, internet, gas, electricity, water, food, and cell phone. So when you're setting your budget, do worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, just put like an extra $20 on top of everything and say, okay, if anything is less than that, I was prepared for the worst, but it came out even better, so I'm happy. Step number five is pay your bills. It's not hard to pay your bills. A lot of these utility companies, they have online payments where you can pay with credit card or debit card. I might make a video on how to utilize your credit card. Post in the comment section down below if you want that. But make sure you pay your bills on time. And the last and final most important step is please be responsible. I'm not saying don't enjoy it. You know, you deserved it, you worked hard for it, and this is a step that everyone has to go through. But remember, work hard, play hard too, but also be responsible. Remember, moving out, you're an adult now. You're not a kid. So you'll get it out of your system, but remember what you're doing, you know you're an adult now you got bills and you'll figure it out that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you guys ever plan on moving out i hope you use this information and i hope it helps you guys make sure you guys press the like button post a comment down below if there's anything you want me to talk about subscribe turn on the notification bell i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video